again and welcome back to our course on Word 2019. This is Deb and we're about to jump into our next module which is working with numbers. Now occasionally in a Word document you might have some kind of list that you want to apply numbering to. And when I say numbering, that might be one, two, three, or it might be A, B, C, or maybe Roman numerals or something along those lines. You can also number paragraphs as well. So this is what we're going to explore in this module. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a list. So I just have a new blank document open on the screen. And I'm going to create a very basic list of four names. So I'm going to start with my name. We're then going to have Adam, we're going to have Jenny, and we're going to have Chris. And I want to number each of these names. Now, as with most things in Word, the first step is to select what we want to number. So I'm going to use my mouse and I'm just going to highlight all of those names. I'm then going to jump up to that home ribbon. And in this paragraph group, this is where you'll find your numbering drop down. And as I hover over, you can see the tooltip there says create a numbered list and then click the arrow for more numbering formats. So if I click the arrow, you can see currently we have none selected because it has the gray box around the outside and it gives me a number of choices that I can select for my list. So it really depends if you want it numbered one, two, three, or maybe Roman numerals, if you want A, B, C. And you can see we have uppercase and lowercase and various different variants on those. Now I'm going to start out just with a very basic list. So I just want this one here, the one, two, three. And there we can see we have our list numbered. Now, the good thing about using numbering in this way is that if you add a name to the bottom of the list, so if I hit enter, it automatically puts in the next number. So I might want to add in another name. If I hit enter again, if I decide at this point that I don't want that number there, I can just hit my backspace key. Or alternatively, let me just undo that step. I could just choose to turn off numbering. So just click that numbering button again and it will take me back to the margin and I can carry on typing paragraph or whatever it is that I want to type into this document. If I decided that I wanted to change the way this was numbered, so maybe I wanted it to say A, B, C instead, again, it's a simple case of highlighting, going back up to your numbering options and selecting the option that you want like so. So I'm gonna select my list once more. I'm going to go back up to that numbering drop down and you can see that the formats that I've recently used will be listed at the top so that makes it a lot easier for me to access. If we move down to some of these options that we have at the bottom this change list level we're actually going to look at that when we look at outline numbering. I just want to draw your attention to this here define new number format. So this allows you to go in and really customize how your numbering looks. So currently I have my number style set to ABC, but I could go in and change that to something else if I wanted to. And I can also change the font of my numbering. So again, if I wanted it to look slightly different, so maybe Arial, I'm going to say bold and let's do 12. And I'm going to say I want my numbers to be red. And you can see in the preview at the bottom what that's going to look like. So it's now in Arial font, it's bold, it's slightly bigger, and it's also red. And click on OK, and OK again. And there we go. Let's jump back into there, so define new number format. And you can also choose your alignment. So currently I have mine set to left alignment, but I could choose to center it, or put it over on the right. So that makes some minor adjustments as to the placement of that numbering as well. Now I'm going to say OK just here. I'm going to jump back up and this time we're going to look at this set numbering value. Now this is useful if you want to create another list underneath. So if I was to start another list, so if I just press enter, I'm just going to backspace that out. And let's do some more names. I'm going to say Rob, James, Brooke. I'm going to highlight them and I'm going to apply some numbering. You can see the numbering carries on from the numbering above. So it's gone straight down to F, G and H. 
Now it might be that because this is a separate list that I actually want to restart this back at A. And that is where I would define that new number. So I'm going to go back up into numbering. I'm going to go to set numbering value and I'm going to say set value and then we're going to go to A. Click on OK. And there we go. I now have my separate list. So if you don't define that, then it's going to continue on from the list before. So just be aware of that when you're working with your numbering. Now, I just quickly want to switch across to the Smith flyer that we were working on earlier. So I'm going to go up to view. I'm going to go to switch windows and I'm going to go back to my Smith flyer document. And in here I have some paragraphs. And what I want to do is I want to show you how numbering works when it comes to paragraphs. So I'm going to click at the start of the first paragraph and I'm just going to click on the numbering button. And you can see there it's numbered the entire paragraph. Let's do it for the second one and you can see it continues through. Click at the front of the third one. Now when I click at the front of the third one and apply the numbering, you'll see something different happens. Just the first line is numbered. Let's do it for the others. Now the reason why that's happening is because these three have a line break in there. So we've hit enter and we've gone on to the second line. So as far as word is concerned, those are completely new paragraphs essentially. Whereas the first two here are kind of continuous sentences that just run on. So these are considered to be paragraphs. So just be aware of that. I just really wanted to show you that numbering doesn't just apply to lists that you create, but you can also apply it to paragraphs. I'm going to jump very briefly back to our other document. So let's go to switch windows and back to our document one. It is worth noting that you don't have to have a list already created in order to apply numbering. So let me jump back to the home ribbon and just remove the numbering and hit enter. Now, if I wanted to, before I even started to create my list, I could turn on my numbering just by clicking on the numbering button. And remember, it's always going to continue on from the previous list unless you tell it to restart. So I'm going to click my drop down and you can see there I have a useful restart numbering button and I can then go and create my next list. So I might say Matt, Heather, Claire. OK, so that is how you work with basic numbering in a document. And that's with regards to lists and also with regards to numbering paragraphs. In the next module, we're going to move on to taking a look at an alternative way of making lists stand out. And that is by using bullets. So please join me for that. Hello again and welcome back to our course on Word 2019. We've just got through working with numbered lists in a document and now I want to talk to you a little bit about working with bullets, which is slightly different to numbering, but along the same lines. So what we're looking at here is our document and I just have a, a basic list again, just those names that we were looking at previously and they're numbered one to seven currently. And I want to change these instead of numbers. I want to have bullets. And if you're not sure what a bullet is, it's just really like a symbol. And there's various different symbols that you can use as your bullets. Most of the time in documents, probably what you'll see is just the round, solid black bullet. But you can utilize lots and lots of different things as your bullets, as you'll see as we go through this module. So the first thing I'm going to do is make my selection. So I'm going to highlight my list of names. I'm going to jump up to the paragraph group again. And next to numbering, we have a little button that says bullets. And you can see there the tooltip says create a bulleted list. Click the arrow to change the look of the bullet. So let's click the arrow and see what we have in there. Now you're presented with a bullet library and it's given you sort of some of the most common bullets that people might use and also a couple of ones that I've used in the past as well. And I will say probably the one that I use most of the time is this first one here, just that round black bullet. But I could select any of these as I hover over them. You can see what those look like. The tick is quite good for things like to do lists, so on and so forth. So you can really kind of choose what kind of bullet will suit the document that you're creating. So I could select any one of these. Alternatively, what I could do is go down to the define new bullet option. 
And this is where you can really go to town and really choose a symbol that's going to suit your document. You can see here we have bullet character and we have a choice of symbol, picture or font. So let's look at symbol first of all. So this will open up your symbol dialog box and symbols essentially are just fonts and they're divided down into fonts. So there's lots and lots of different symbols in here. I will say because there are so many, it would take you a long time to go through them all looking for something appropriate. But a lot of the time, some of the best ones that you'll use or some of the most popular you'll find under web dings. So we have lots of interesting things which we could add into our document. So you can see at the bottom here, I have some symbols that I've recently used. So we have a plane and we have some other little symbols. Now I'm actually going to use one of these. I'm going to use this star just here. Alternatively, I could scroll through all of this list of symbols looking for something that I quite like. But for ease of use, I'm going to select the star and I'm going to click on OK. And you can see there I get a little preview of what that's going to look like in my document and click on OK again. And my numbering has now been changed to that particular symbol. Now, if I want to get a little bit more complex, I could choose a picture, either one that I have stored off or one that I can find on the web. So let's change these bullets from symbols into a picture. I'm going to keep my list highlighted. I'm going to jump back up to that bullets drop down and back down into define new bullet. And you can probably guess where I'm about to head. We are now jumping to this picture option in the middle. And you can see here, I get a few different options. I can choose a picture from a file. So that would be if you have one saved off to your desktop or my documents or a local drive, you could pick it up from there. I can choose to search the internet for an image or I can choose one that I have saved into OneDrive cloud storage. Now, in this case, I'm going to search for a Bing image. So I'm going to say, let's just keep this simple. I'm going to say dog. And then you can see it's gone away. It's done a search for the word dog on Bing and it's presented me with a number of images. And again, remember always to check the copyright on images. If you're just downloading something off the Internet, you want to make sure that it has a Creative Commons license in order for you to be able to use it in your document. So I'm currently filtering for images which only have a Creative Commons license. So I know that any of these are good to use. So I can go through and I'm going to choose this one just here and I'm going to select insert and click on OK. And there we go. We have a cute little image of a dog, which adds a little bit more interest into your document. Now, another way that you might want to use bullets or images or symbols even is if I was to type underneath here uh, my telephone number is and then I'm just going to put in like that. What I could do is I could add the telephone symbol into my sentence. So maybe I want to put it in here in between telephone and number. I can insert my cursor where I want it to go. I can go to the insert ribbon and I'm going to go all the way across to the last group on the right hand side where it says symbols and I'm going to click on symbol. And again, it's going to give me a list of all of the ones that I've used recently, but I'm going to go to uh, more symbols and I'm going to select the telephone icon just here or the telephone symbol, which is under the wingdings font and click on insert and close. And you can see that I've now utilized those symbols, not only in my bullets, but also just within a line of text. So that's something else cool that you can do with symbols in your documents. And it's worth remembering that with these symbols, they are treated as fonts. So you can do things such as change the color of them just by highlighting and utilizing your font options. So I can change it to red just by changing the font color because they are essentially fonts, not pictures, they're symbols. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how you can apply basic bullets and also some more advanced bullets using symbols and pictures that you have saved off into your documents. In the next module, we're going to take a look at how you can create an outline from scratch. So please join me for that. 
Hello again, this is Deb and welcome back to our course on Word 2019. In the previous module, we were taking a look at bulleted lists and also numbered lists as well. And I'd like to finish up this section by just talking a little bit about creating an outline. Now I'm starting with my numbered list again and I'm going to click my mouse after the first name and hit the enter key. Now, as we've seen before, when we do that, it will just continue the numbering on. But what about if I want to make this a second level number? Well, very simply, I can press the tab key on my keyboard and that will give me a second level of numbering. So it's very important for you to know these terms. So using your tab key will demote a level and using shift tab will promote. OK, so as I've done shift tab, it's taken it back to that first level numbering. Tab will put it down to second level numbering. So I'm now going to type something about Deborah. I'm going to say she was voted the top employee in 2017. And when I hit enter, you'll see that it continues on with that level of numbering. So I could then type in voted the top employee in 2018 and hit enter. Now, if I wanted to come out of there again, I could just do shift tab and that will take me back to there. Alternatively, I could backspace if I wanted to remove it altogether. So now I'm going to jump back across to our Smith flyer and we can take a look at how we can apply outline level numbering to paragraphs. So from the view tab, I'm going to click on switch windows and go back to my Smith flyer. And I'm going to highlight all the way down from who we are to we're growing. So let's make that selection. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my home ribbon and I'm going to go to this button just here, the multi-level list. So let's click the drop down and see what we have in there. I have a few different choices that I could make. So again, it really depends on how you want your outline level numbering to look. Now I want mine to look like this. So I want my first level to have a number one, my second level, a small a, my third level, Roman numerals, so on and so forth. So let's select that one. So let's take a look at what it's done here. So you can see it's got number one at the top here, then two, number three, and it follows through. But what it hasn't done is recognize that this should be on the second level. So all I need to do is click in front of where it says the brokers and associates and hit the tab key to demote that to the second level. And you can then see everything then follows through. And I could do the same for these ones down here. So hit tab, tab, tab and I could carry on going through to get that looking exactly how I want. So quite simple to create an outline. And if I wanted to, I could create a third level as well. So if we go down here to buying a home and click in front of uh, visit open houses, if I press my tab key again, that's going to make that a third level like so. OK, so you can go through and you can make those little minor adjustments as well. Now, what if I wanted to change the whole of the outline again? Well, let's make our selection once more. Go up to our outline level numbering. And I could go to define new multi-level list. And what this will allow me to do is really get granular and really customize how my multi-level list looks. So you can see here I have nine levels and you can see those listed out there. So the first level is going to be a number one. We then have A, I and then so on and so forth. And I can go in and I can select a level and I can make some really granular changes to the formatting. So if I wanted to for my level ones, I could change the font by going into here making it something completely different by making my selections. I could even change the color if I wanted to. And that's how it will look. I can go to level two and I could change the number star for this level if I wanted to and change it to Roman numerals instead. I could change the number alignment, the text indent, loads of different ways that I can format how my multi-level list looks. So it's definitely worth going in there and really customizing so you can just very quickly apply your newly customized multi-level numbering to your document. 
So just know that you can go into here and define that new multi-level list. I'm going to click cancel because I'm fairly happy with how mine looks. So that's a way you can define your outline numbering for an entire document. So if you already have a document sort of laid out, you can go in there, highlight it all, select your multi-level list and then promote and demote as necessary or even get a bit granular and change each level of your list. That pretty much finishes up this section. In the next module, we're going to do a practice exercise. So I will see you over there. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so that you get notified about similar videos we upload. Now to get the full Microsoft Word 2019 course, including follow along exercise files, click over there and click over there to watch all the videos in this Word 2019 playlist.